Hi, in this video, we want to look at residuals and regression. So we're going to look at raw residuals, standardized residuals, and studentized residuals. Okay, so uh, residuals are the difference between our observed data and our fitted model, uh, the fitted value. Standardized residuals, we're just taking those residuals that we, we got, the raw ones, and then we're dividing by a standard deviation. That way, it, we have some consistency when we go from one project looking at a linear regression model and go to another project with a different linear regression model. It makes it easier for us as humans to interpret what's going on. Student eyes residuals have an adjustment. So they're similar to standardized, but they kind of modify things to make sure that the observed distribution of the residuals matches the theoretical aspect of errors in linear regression. All right, so let's look at raw residuals. So that's going to be the difference between the observed data and the model's fitted value. Okay, so something to notice is that if a residual is positive, then we know that the model was low of the, of the observed point. If a residual is negative, we know that the fitted value was high. All right, so something to focus in on this is that this is our estimate of the error of the model in relation to the true value. So we're, so this is only an estimate of the error because we are estimating the model itself. So the line of best fit is an estimated function, an estimated line. We don't truly know what the model is supposed to be. We're just kind of estimating, making our best guess. All right, so that means that our fit value is an estimated value. Therefore, the difference is an estimated value of the error. Okay. Well, a feature of linear regression, and this only applies to linear regression, this does not apply to other types of machine learning models, is that residuals in linear regression always add up to zero. Okay, so if I, take, if I build a linear regression model, add up all the residuals, it adds up to zero. Okay, well, that means also the average, the sample average of them is equal to zero also, because we're just taking the sum and dividing by n. But wait, there's more. Now, here is some juiciness in this next one. All right, so if I go through simple linear regression and I take x times the residual and then I add them up, I'm going to see that I'm going to get zero again. So if I take this equation here, I take every single residual, I take its corresponding x, and this only works for simple linear regression, but residual times its x value, add them all up, it's once again equal to zero. All right, what this shows us is that residuals are not independent of our x values. All right, that's kind of a big deal. Okay, so something that needs to, needs to be pointed out is that our assumptions of regression is that our error terms are in, have constant variance and the, that constant variance is independent of the x value. So that's what, when you hear uh, constant variance, what we're saying is that with regard to the x, with regard to the predictor variables, the variance doesn't change. Okay, well, clearly on our residuals, this doesn't work out because of this equation right here. Okay, so our error terms by assumption have constant variance with respect to x, but the estimates of the errors do not. Kind of, kind of a surprising aspect, kind of interesting, huh? All right, so now let's look at standardized residuals. Standardized residuals, what we do, we're gonna center and scale our residuals to make it easier for us to interpret what's going on. So center and scale, remember, I subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation. So I take my, my raw residuals, I subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. Okay, well, the mean is equal to zero because the sum is equal to zero. So really, it's just dividing by the standard deviation. And when I say standard deviation, that's the sample standard deviation. Okay, so how do we interpret uh, standardized residuals? So when I look at it, I th think of it in terms of like the normal distributions. It's a, you know, that, that's a good benchmark. This is a 100% best way to go, but as humans, we need some kind of guidance. So when I look, think about things being as spread out as standard normal. You know, approximately speaking, 68% uh, should be within plus or minus one. 
approximately speaking, 95% should be within plus or minus two, and you know, 99% should be within uh, plus or minus three. So if I see something bigger than three in magnitude, I know that it's big. If I see something bigger than five, that's really big. Okay, so why do I need this? Well, if I'm working with raw residuals, I have to consider the magnitude of, of my uh, target variable. Uh, the, the variance of my target variable influences the size of my, uh, my raw residuals. Standardization makes it so that it's consistent from model to model to model, from project to project to project. So it's easier for me as a human being to interpret what's going on. Now, studentized residuals, this is very similar to standardized residuals, but it takes it one step further. All right, so standardization makes it so that things are kind of on an easier scale for us to interpret. Studentized residuals go one step further and make it so that we have approximately speaking uh, uh, constant variance with respect to the uh, predictor variable. Okay, so remember from what I said earlier, the error terms have constant variance with respect to X, but the estimates of the error do not. So we want to correct for that if we can. All right, so if I look and see, if we, if we sat down and we did all the theoretical work, and I've got some videos on that. It's all pencil and paper stuff. It's all proofs. But if we sit down and we work through it, the variance of the residual is equal to a variance term times one minus the leverage. Okay, so something about leverage. Leverage is always between zero and one, and it's always uh, bounded above by one. So what we can see is that high leverage data points have low variance, and low leverage uh, data points were going to have greater variance. Hmm. Okay, now if we go through and we work through this, and we uh, apply this to simple linear regression, we'll see that we get this beautiful mathematical term. So I have one minus one over N. All right, so from our point of view, N is constant. So this part is where things get interesting. All right, so first thing we want to look at is this. So in simple linear regression, if the predictor is close to the average of the predictors, then we're gonna have, uh, you know, the, uh, the, I'm sorry. Um, you know, the, so if it's close, this is small. If this is small, I'm subtracting off means it's going to be big. Okay. And so that's how this works out. Now, if I look here, that looks a lot like part of the slope equation formula. So we can see that this part here gives us a connection between the variance of the residuals and the slopes. So points that are close to the middle are relatively insensitive to the slope because uh, every, it is always true in simple linear regression, the line always goes to the point x bar, y bar. So if it's close to x bar, the, the predictor variable is close to x bar, then there really isn't that much going on because it's so close to that center point. But if we're farther out, that slope makes a bigger impact. And so there is a direct connection there. Now, when we uh, studentize, what we do, I take my residual, I divide by the standard deviation, but I go one step further. I take the square root of the leverage and then divide by that. And boom, we have something that, is a, uh, that has constant variance at this point. All right, so now let's talk about working with residuals in R. And I'm going to give an example of why we like, uh, you know, using standardized residuals and studentized residuals. All right, so in R, we have a bunch of different types. And the, the, there's some double labeling going on. We have working and response residuals, which I call the raw residuals. And this is observed minus fitted. We have deviance and Pearson residuals. These are weighted residuals where they're scaled by the square root of the weights that are used in fitting the model. All right, so this is, I say a point is more or less important, therefore its residual is more or less important. 
Standardized residuals are the response residuals after rescaling to have standard deviation of one. So that's the raw residual divided by sample standard deviation. And then student eyes, what we're doing, we're going through and we're adjusting to get the, uh, the distribution to match the theoretical aspects that we like. Okay, so if you're only working with regression models, use raw and student eyes residuals. I would just use student eyes residuals personally in the vast majority of my projects. If I want to use regression models and other model structures, such as random forest, neural network, you know, uh, extreme gradient boosting, stuff like that, then I'm gonna be working with the raw and the uh, standardized residuals. And so for me, the main one will be the standardized residuals. Okay, so what I wanna do now, I want to build some models to show you why this is important. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build the, the same model three times, but there's gonna be a little bit of a twist. All right, so here I've got the target variable. Here I've got two times the target variable. Here I've got one half of the target variable. Okay, so the only difference in these models is uh, multiplication or division of the target variable. Let's see how things change in the uh, in the residuals and studentized residuals, standardized residuals. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the model summary statistics. All right, so what we'll see when I multiply or divide, the coefficients change, but standard and standard errors change, but t statistics and p value stay the same. All right, so the hypothesis testing aspects changed, but the coefficients adjusted. Okay. Now the actual residual values changed, but the correlation and everything about the F's test stayed the same. All right, so let's take a look at that. I'm gonna to need to make this smaller to show it to you. All right, so up here is the baseline model. If I look at my residuals, I can see that I have different residuals, right? And we can kind of see that there's, you know, looks like a multiplication of two about for the difference between them. Make this one step smaller. All right, if I look at the estimated values, those changed. If I look at the standard error, it changed. And you notice that this looks like about double of what uh, the, the baseline was. But the T value and the P values all stayed the same. Isn't that interesting? Now, if I look at You know, the residuals, the standard error, it's about double. We have 45 degrees of freedom either way, so that stayed the same. The correlation is the same. And everything with the F statistic is the same. Huh, isn't that interesting? And just for completeness, I did also for the division model but I'm not gonna talk about it any further because it's the same result. Now let's look at the ANOVA output. So if I look here, I can see that the degrees of freedom are the same across the models, whether it's baseline or double. Sum of squares, I see the sum of squares are different, about a multiplication of four. The mean squares are different, but when I hit the F value and the P value, those are still the same. So even, so one thing you can notice that as uh, things grew, other things grew, and for a hypothesis test, it came out the same result. All right, so now I wanna compare the different types of residuals for each of these models. So I'm gonna take a look at the baseline model, the um, multiplication by two model and the division model. And then we're gonna look at the raw residuals, standardized residuals and studentized residuals. That's nine different uh, uh, residuals that are being grabbed. And in R, I'm using residuals and response to get the raw residuals. I use R standard to get the standardized residuals. I use R student to get the studentized residuals. Okay, so, and all this code is just to, this part grabs all the residuals
Oh, here I was just uh, double checking to make sure some stuff was all good. Don't really need that. Now here, what I'm doing, I'm reshaping the data so that I can uh, plot it in ggplot. And then I'm breaking up the residuals uh, into the type and the model, the type of residual and the model into two different columns. And now here I plot the box plots. So first thing I wanna do, I wanna look at the raw residuals. So remember the baseline model, I didn't do anything to the target variable. In the division model, I divided the target variable by two. And then in the multiply model, I multiply by two. Well, hey, look at this. I mean, you can see that, you know, there's a, a big difference and that's from uh, the magnitude. But when I get to the standardized, they're all the same, it doesn't matter. So the, what I'm trying to impress upon you is that when I standardize my residuals, it's easier for me to interpret because everything's gonna be on the same scale every single time. Um, so that it makes it easier for us as humans to work through it. If I look at student eyes, then I see that it's the same every single time. The difference between standardized and student eyes is an adjustment uh, by, uh, you know, uh, is addressing the leverage that's going on for the predictor uh, data. And so here, the, the punchline of this visualization is that if I'm doing model after model after model and they're all regression models, standardizing and for studentizing makes it so that the interpretation, I can use the same standard to interpret every single time. Now, if I'm doing a machine learning model, I want to be, you know, let's say I've got a neural network and the K nearest neighbors and random forest and linear regression, I want to use standardized residuals across all of them because it's uh, I'm doing the center and scale. Remember, only regression has a mean of zero for residuals. The other ones, I need to subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation. That makes it easier for me to uh, figure stuff out. All right, so now, and, oh, and if I'm working strictly with regression, then I want to use studentized because that gives me better theoretical properties. And let's look at the distribution in terms of histograms. So here we can see that in the division case, look at the raw ones first, in division, that distribution of residuals was tighter. The baseline is a little bit more spread out and multiplies even more spread out. Now, something about this is that we saw from the summary statistics and the ANOVA is that really performance-wise, these are all the same models. The difference is the scale of the error. Okay, well, because the original observed data, the target variable was on different scales for all three of these, we can, uh, that's why we see this difference. And that's, that's why we get the same like hypothesis testing results. When I look at the standardized distributions, histograms, I see it's the same all three times. And I see the student eyes the same all three times. So. This further shows us that if I'm going to be interpreting residuals, I really want to work with the standardized or studentized representation. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Take care and goodbye.